third Nephi, the book of Nephi, the son of Nephi, who was the son of Helaman. And Helaman was the son of Helaman, who was the son of Alma, who was the son of Alma, being a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of Jerusalem in the first year of the reign of Zedekiah, the king of Judah. Now it came to pass that the ninety and first year had passed away, and it was six hundred years from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. And it was in the year that Laconius was the chief judge and the governor over the land. And Nephi, the son of Helaman, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, giving charge unto his son Nephi, who was his eldest son, concerning the plates of brass, and all the records which had been kept, and all those things which had been kept sacred from the departure of Lehi out of Jerusalem. Then he departed out of the land, and whither he went no man knoweth, and his son Nephi did keep the records in his stead, yea, the record of this people. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the ninety and second year, behold, the prophecies of the prophets began to be fulfilled more fully. For there began to be greater signs and greater miracles wrought among the people. But there were some who began to say that the time was past for the words to be fulfilled, which were spoken by Samuel the Lamanite. And they began to rejoice over their brethren, saying, Behold, the time is past, and the words of Samuel are not fulfilled. Therefore your joy and your faith concerning this thing hath been vain. And it came to pass that they did make a great uproar throughout the land, and the people who believed began to be very sorrowful, lest by any means those things which had been spoken might not come to pass. But behold, they did watch steadfastly for that day and that night and that day which should be as one day, as if there were no night, that they might know that their faith had not been vain. And it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers, that all those who believed in those traditions should be put to death, except the sign should come to pass, which had been given by Samuel the prophet. Now it came to pass that when Nephi, the son of Nephi, saw this wickedness of his people, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. And it came to pass that he went out and bowed himself down upon the earth and cried mightily to his God in behalf of his people, yea, those who were about to be destroyed because of their faith in the tradition of their fathers. And it came to pass that he cried mightily unto the Lord all that day. And behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, Lift up your head, and be of good cheer. For behold, the time is at hand, and on this night shall the sign be given. And on the morrow come I into the world, to show unto the world that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. Behold, I come unto my own to fulfill all things which I have made known unto the children of men from the foundation of the world, and to do the will both of the Father and of the Son, and of the Father because of me, and of the Son because of my flesh. And behold, the time is at hand, and this night shall the sign be given. And it came to pass that the words which came unto Nephi were fulfilled, according as they had been spoken. For behold, at the going down of the sun there was no darkness, and the people began to be astonished because there was no darkness when the night came. And there were many who had not believed the words of the prophets who fell to the earth and became as if they were dead, for they knew that the great plan of destruction which they had laid for those who believed in the words of the prophets had been frustrated, for the sign which had been given was already at hand. They began to know that the Son of God must shortly appear, yea, in fine, all the people upon the face of the whole earth, from the west to the east, both in the land north and in the land south, were so exceedingly astonished that they fell to the earth. For they knew that the prophets had testified of these things for many years, and that the sign which had been given was already at hand. They began to fear because of their iniquity and their unbelief. And it came to pass that there was no darkness in all that night, but it was as light as though it was midday. And it came to pass that the sun did rise in the morning again according to its proper order, 
and they knew that it was the day that the Lord should be born, because of the sign which had been given. And it had come to pass, yea, all things, every whit, according to the words of the prophets. And it came to pass also that a new star did appear according to the word. And it came to pass that from this time forth there began to be lying sent forth among the people by Satan to harden their hearts, to the intent that they might not believe in those signs and wonders which they had seen. But notwithstanding these lyings and deceivings, the more part of the people did believe, and were converted unto the Lord. And it came to pass that Nephi went forth among the people, and also many others, baptizing unto repentance, in the which there was a great remission of sins. And thus the people began again to have peace in the land. And there were no contentions, save it were a few, that began to preach, endeavoring to prove by the scriptures that it was no more expedient to observe the law of Moses. Now in this thing they did err, having not understood the scriptures. But it came to pass that they soon became converted, and were convinced of the error which they were in. For it was made known unto them that the law was not yet fulfilled, and that it must be fulfilled in every wit. Yea, the word came unto them that it must be fulfilled. Yea, that one jot or tittle should not pass away, till it should all be fulfilled. Therefore, in the same year, were they brought to a knowledge of their error, and did confess their faults. And thus the ninety and second year did pass away, bringing glad tidings unto the people, because of the signs which did come to pass, according to the words of the prophecy of all the holy prophets. And it came to pass that the ninety and third year did also pass away in peace, save it were for the Gadianton robbers who dwelt upon the mountains, who did infest the land, for so strong were their holds and their secret places that the people could not overpower them. Therefore they did commit many murders and did do much slaughter among the people. And it came to pass that in the ninety and fourth year they began to increase in a great degree, because there were many dissenters of the Nephites who did flee unto them, which did cause much sorrow unto those Nephites who did remain in the land. And there was also a cause of much sorrow among the Lamanites, for behold, they had many children who did grow up and began to wax strong in years, that they became for themselves and were led away by some who were Zoramites by their lyings and their flattering words to join those Gadianton robbers. And thus were the Lamanites afflicted also, and began to decrease as to their faith and righteousness because of the wickedness of the rising generation. And it came to pass that thus passed away the ninety and fifth year also, and the people began to forget those signs and wonders which they had heard, and began to be less and less astonished at a sign or a wonder from heaven, insomuch that they began to be hard in their hearts, and blind in their minds, and began to disbelieve all which they had heard and seen, imagining up some vain thing in their heart, that it was wrought by men and by the power of the devil to lead away and deceive the hearts of the people. And thus did Satan get possession of the hearts of the people again, insomuch that he did blind their eyes and lead them away to believe that the doctrine of Christ was a foolish and a vain thing. And it came to pass that the people began to wax strong in wickedness and abominations, and they did not believe that there should be any more signs or wonders given. And Satan did go about leading away the hearts of the people, tempting them and causing them that they should do great wickedness in the land. And thus did pass away the ninety and sixth year, and also the ninety and seventh year, and also the ninety and eighth year, and also the ninety and ninth year. And also an hundred years had passed away since the days of Mosiah, who was king over the people of the Nephites. And six hundred and nine years had passed away since Lehi left Jerusalem. And nine years had passed away from the time when the sign was given, which was spoken of by the prophets that Christ should come into the world. Now the Nephites began to reckon their time from this period when the sign was given, or from the coming of Christ, therefore nine years had passed away. 
and Nephi, who was the father of Nephi, who had the charge of the records, did not return to the land of Zarahemla, and could nowhere be found in all the land. And it came to pass that the people did still remain in wickedness, notwithstanding the much preaching and prophesying which was sent among them, and thus passed away the tenth year also, and the eleventh year also passed away in iniquity. And it came to pass in the thirteenth year there began to be wars and contentions throughout all the land, for the Gadians and robbers had become so numerous, and did slay so many of the people, and did lay waste so many cities, and did spread so much death and carnage throughout the land, that it became expedient that all the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, should take up arms against them. Therefore all the Lamanites who had become converted unto the Lord did unite with their brethren the Nephites, and were compelled for the safety of their lives and their women and their children to take up arms against those Gadianton robbers, yea, and also to maintain their rights and the privileges of their church, and of their worship, and their freedom, and their liberty. And it came to pass that before this thirteenth year had passed away, the Nephites were threatened with utter destruction because of this war, which had become exceedingly sore. And it came to pass that those Lamanites who had united with the Nephites were numbered among the Nephites. And their curse was taken from them, and their skin became white like unto the Nephites. And their young men and their daughters became exceedingly fair. And they were numbered among the Nephites, and were called Nephites, and thus ended the thirteenth year. And it came to pass in the commencement of the fourteenth year, the war between the robbers and the people of Nephi did continue, and did become exceedingly sore. Nevertheless, the people of Nephi did gain some advantage of the robbers, insomuch that they did drive them back out of their lands, into the mountains, and into their secret places. And thus ended the fourteenth year, and the fifteenth year they did come forth against the people of Nephi, and because of the wickedness of the people of Nephi, and their many contentions and dissensions, the Gadianton robbers did gain many advantages over them. And thus ended the fifteenth year, and thus were the people in a state of many afflictions, and the sword of destruction did hang over them, insomuch that they were about to be smitten down by it, and this because of their iniquity. Now it came to pass that in the sixteenth year from the coming of Christ, Laconius, the governor of the land, received an epistle from the leader and the governor of this band of robbers. And these were the words which were written, saying, Laconius, most noble and chief governor of the land, behold, I write this epistle unto you, and do give unto you exceedingly great praise because of your firmness and also the firmness of your people in maintaining that which he supposed to be your right and liberty. Yea, ye do stand well as if ye were supported by the hand of a god in the defense of your liberty and your property and your country, or that which ye do call so. And it seemeth a pity unto me, most noble Laconius, that ye should be so foolish and vain as to suppose that ye can stand against so many brave men who are at my command, who do now at this time stand in their arms and do await with great anxiety for the word, go down upon the Nephites and destroy them. And I, knowing of their unconquerable spirit, having proved them in the field of battle, and knowing of their everlasting hatred towards you, because of the many wrongs which ye have done unto them, therefore, if they should come down against you, they would visit you with utter destruction. Therefore, I have written this epistle, sealing it with mine own hand, feeling for your welfare, because of your firmness in that which ye believe to be right, and your noble spirit in the field of battle. Therefore I write unto you, desiring that ye would yield up unto this my people your cities, your lands, and your possessions, rather than that they should visit you with the sword, and that destruction should come upon you. Or, in other words, yield yourselves up unto us, and unite with us, and become acquainted with our secret works, and become our brethren, that ye may be like unto us, not our slaves, but our brethren, and partners of all our substance. And behold, I swear unto you, if ye will do this with an oath, ye shall not be destroyed, 
But if you will not do this, I swear unto you, with an oath, that on the morrow month I will command that my armies shall come down against you, and they shall not stay their hand, and shall spare not, but shall slay you, and shall let fall the sword upon you, even until you shall become extinct. And behold, I am Gedeonhai, and I am the governor of this, the secret band of Gadianton, which society and the works thereof I know to be good, and they are of ancient date, and they have been handed down unto us. And I write this epistle unto you, Laconius, and I hope that you will deliver up your lands and your possessions without the shedding of blood, that this my people may recover their rights and government, who have dissented away from you because of your wickedness in retaining from them their rights of government. And except ye do this, I will avenge their wrongs. I am Gedeonhai. And now it came to pass, when Laconius received this epistle, he was exceedingly astonished because of the boldness of Gedeonhai, demanding the possession of the land of the Nephites, and also of threatening the people and avenging the wrongs of those that had received no wrong, save it were they had wronged themselves by dissenting away unto those wicked and abominable robbers. Now behold, this Laconius, the governor, was a just man, and could not be frightened by the demands and the threatenings of a robber. Therefore he did not hearken to the epistle of Gedeonhai, the governor of the robbers, but he did cause that his people should cry unto the Lord for strength against the time that the robbers should come down against them. Yea, he sent a proclamation among all the people, that they should gather together their women and their children, their flocks and their herds, and all their substance, save it were their land, unto one place. And he caused that fortifications should be built round about them, and the strength thereof should be exceedingly great. And he caused that armies, both of the Nephites and of the Lamanites, or of all them who were numbered among the Nephites, should be placed as guards round about to watch them, and to guard them from the robbers day and night. Yea, he said unto them, As the Lord liveth, except ye repent of all your iniquities, and cry unto the Lord, ye will in no wise be delivered out of the hands of those Gadianton robbers. And so great and marvelous were the words and prophecies of Laconius, that they did cause fear to come upon all the people. And they did exert themselves in their might to do according to the words of Laconius. And it came to pass that Laconius did appoint chief captains over all the armies of the Nephites, to command them at the time that the robbers should come down out of the wilderness against them. Now the chiefest among all the chief captains, and the great commander of all the armies of the Nephites, was appointed, and his name was Gidgadonai. And it was the custom among all the Nephites to appoint for their chief captains, save it were in their times of wickedness, some one that had the spirit of revelation and also prophecy. Therefore this Gidgadonai was a great prophet among them, as also was the chief judge. Now the people said unto Gidgadonai, Pray unto the Lord, and let us go up upon the mountains and into the wilderness, that we may fall upon the robbers, and destroy them in their own lands. But Gidgadonai saith unto them, The Lord forbid, for if we should go up against them, the Lord would deliver us into their hands. Therefore we will prepare ourselves in the center of our lands, and we will gather all our armies together, and we will not go against them, but we will wait till they shall come against us. Therefore, as the Lord liveth, if we do this, he will deliver them into our hands. And it came to pass, in the seventeenth year, in the latter end of the year, the proclamation of Laconius had gone forth throughout all the face of the land, and they had taken their horses, and their chariots, and their cattle, and all their flocks, and their herds, and their grain, and all their substance, and did march forth by thousands and by tens of thousands, until they had all gone forth to the place which had been appointed that they should gather th themselves together to defend themselves against their enemies. And the land which was appointed was the land of Zarahemla, and the land which was between the land of Zarahemla and the land bountiful, 
yea, to the line which was between the land bountiful and the land desolation. And there were a great many thousand people who were called Nephites who did gather themselves together in this land. Now Laconius did cause that they should gather themselves together in the land southward because of the great curse which was upon the land northward. And they did fortify themselves against their enemies, and they did dwell in one land and in one body. And they did fear the words which had been spoken by Laconius, insomuch that they did repent of all their sins. And they did put up their prayers unto the Lord their God, that he would deliver them in the time that their enemies should come down against them to battle. And they were exceedingly sorrowful because of their enemies. And Gidgidoni did cause that they should make weapons of war of every kind. And they should be strong with armor, and with shields, and with bucklers, after the manner of his instruction. And it came to pass that in the latter end of the eighteenth year, those armies of robbers had prepared for battle, and began to come down and to sally forth from the hills, and out of the mountains and the wilderness, and their strongholds and their secret places, and began to take possession of the lands, both which were in the land south and which were in the land north, and began to take possession of all the lands which had been deserted by the Nephites, and the cities which had been left desolate. But behold, there were no wild beasts nor game in those lands which had been deserted by the Nephites, and there was no game for the robbers save it were in the wilderness. And the robbers could not exist save it were in the wilderness for the want of food, for the Nephites had left their lands desolate, and had gathered their flocks and their herds and all their substance, and they were in one body. Therefore there was no chance for the robbers to plunder and to obtain food, save it were to come up in open battle against the Nephites. And the Nephites, being in one body, and having so great a number, and having reserved for themselves provisions and horses and cattle and flocks of every kind, that they might subsist for the space of seven years, in the which time they did hope to destroy the robbers from off the face of the land. And thus the eighteenth year did pass away. And it came to pass in the nineteenth year, Gideonhai found that it was expedient that he should go up to battle against the Nephites. For there was no way that they could subsist save it were to plunder and rob and murder. And they durst not spread themselves upon the face of the land, insomuch that they could raise grain, lest the Nephites should come upon them and slay them. Therefore Gideonhai gave commandment unto his armies that in this year they should go up to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that they did come up to battle, and it was in the sixth month, and behold, great and terrible was the day that they did come up to battle. And they were girded about after the manner of robbers, and they had a lamb skin about their loins, and they were dyed in blood, and their heads were shorn, and they had head plates upon them, and great and terrible was the appearance of the armies of Gideonhai, because of their armor, and because of their being dyed in blood. And it came to pass that the armies of the Nephites, when they saw the appearance of the army of Gideonhai, had all fallen to the earth, and did lift their cries to the Lord their God, that he would spare them and deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. And it came to pass that when the armies of Gideonhai saw this, they began to shout with a loud voice because of their joy. For they had supposed that the Nephites had fallen with fear because of the terror of their armies. But in this thing they were disappointed. For the Nephites did not fear them, but they did fear their God, and did supplicate him for protection. Therefore, when the armies of Gideonhai did rush upon them, they were prepared to meet them. Yea, in the strength of the Lord they did receive them. And the battle commenced in this the sixth month, and great and terrible was the battle thereof. Yea, great and terrible was the slaughter thereof, insomuch that there never was known so great a slaughter among all the people of Lehi since he left Jerusalem. And notwithstanding the threatenings and the oaths which Gideonhai had made, 
behold, the Nephites did beat them, insomuch that they did fall back from before them. And it came to pass that Gidgadoni commanded that his army should pursue them as far as the borders of the wilderness, and that they should not spare any that should fall into their hands by the way. And thus they did pursue them, and did slay them to the borders of the wilderness, even until they had fulfilled the commandment of Gidgadoni. And it came to pass that Gidionhai, who had stood and fought with boldness, was pursued as he fled. And being weary because of his much fighting, he was overtaken and slain. And thus was the end of Gidionhai the robber. And it came to pass that the armies of the Nephites did return again to their place of security. And it came to pass that this nineteenth year did pass away. And the robbers did not come again to battle, neither did they come again in the twentieth year. And in the twenty and first year they did not come up to battle, but they came up on all sides to lay siege round about the people of Nephi, for they did suppose that if they should cut off the people of Nephi from their lands, and should hem them in on every side, and if they should cut them off from all their outward privileges, that they could cause them to yield themselves up according to their wishes. Now they had appointed unto themselves another leader, whose name was Zemnariha. Therefore it was Zemnariha that did cause that this siege should take place. But behold, this was an advantage to the Nephites, for it was impossible for the robbers to lay siege sufficiently long to have any effect upon the Nephites, because of their much provision, which they had laid up in store. And because of the scantiness of provisions among the robbers, for behold, they had nothing save it were meat for their subsistence, which meat they did obtain in the wilderness, and it came to pass that the wild game became scarce in the wilderness, insomuch that the robbers were about to perish with hunger. And the Nephites were continually marching out by day and by night, and falling upon their armies, and cutting them off by thousands, and by tens of thousands. And thus it became the desire of the people of Zemnariha to withdraw from their design, because of the great destruction which came upon them by night and by day. And it came to pass that Zemnariha did give command unto his people that they should withdraw themselves from the siege and march into the furthermost parts of the land northward. And now, Gidgadoni, being aware of their design and knowing of their weakness because of the want of food and the great slaughter which had been made among them, therefore he did send out his armies in the night time and did cut off the way of their retreat and did place his armies in the way of their retreat. And this did they do in the night time, and got on their march beyond the robbers, so that on the morrow, when the robbers began their march, they were met by the armies of the Nephites both in their front and in their rear. And the robbers who were on the south were also cut off in their place of retreat. And all these things were done by command of Gidgadoni. And there were many thousands who did yield themselves up prisoners unto the Nephites, and the remainder of them were slain. And their leader, Zemnariha, was taken and hanged upon a tree, yea, even upon the top thereof, until he was dead. And when they had hanged him until he was dead, they did fell the tree to the earth, and did cry with a loud voice, saying, May the Lord preserve his people in righteousness and in holiness of heart that they may cause to be felled to the earth all who shall seek to slay them because of power and secret combinations, even as this man hath been felled to the earth. And they did rejoice and cry again with one voice, saying, May the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob protect this people in righteousness, so long as they shall call on the name of their God for protection. And it came to pass that they did break forth all as one, in singing and praising their God for the great thing which he had done for them in preserving them from falling into the hands of their enemies. Yea, they did cry, Hosanna, to the Most High God. And they did cry, Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, the Most High God. And their hearts were swollen with joy under the gushing out of many tears, because of the great goodness of God in delivering them out of the hands of their enemies. And they knew it was because of their repentance and their humility 
that they had been delivered from an everlasting destruction. And now, behold, there was not a living soul among all the people of the Nephites, who did doubt in the least the words of all the holy prophets, who had spoken, for they knew that it must needs be that they must be fulfilled. And they knew that it must be expedient that Christ had come, because of the many signs which had been given according to the words of the prophets, and because of the things which had come to pass already, they knew that it must needs be that all things should come to pass according to that which had been spoken. Therefore they did forsake all their sins and their abominations and their whoredoms, and did serve God with all diligence day and night. Now it came to pass that when they had taken all the robbers prisoners, insomuch that none did escape, who were not slain, they did cast their prisoners in a prison, and did cause the word of God to be preached unto them. And as many as would repent of their sins, and enter into a covenant that they would murder no more, were set at liberty. But as many as there were who did not enter into a covenant, and who did still continue to have those secret murders in their hearts, yea, as many as were found breathing out threatenings against their brethren, were condemned and punished according to the law. And thus they did put an end to all those wicked and secret and abominable combinations, in the which there was so much wickedness and so many murders committed. And thus had the twenty and second year passed away, and the twenty and third year also, and the twenty and fourth, and the twenty and fifth, and thus had twenty and five years passed away. And there had many things transpired, which in the eyes of some would be great and marvelous. Nevertheless, they cannot all be written in this book. Yea, this book cannot contain even a hundredth part of what was done among so many people in the space of twenty and five years. But behold, there are records which do contain all the proceedings of this people, and a shorter but true account was given by Nephi. Therefore I have made my record of these things according to the record of Nephi, which was engraven on the plates which were called the plates of Nephi. And behold, I do make the record on plates which I had made with mine own hands. And behold, I am called Mormon, being called after the land of Mormon, the land in which Alma did establish the church among the people. Yea, the first church which was established among them after their transgression. Behold, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I have been called of him to declare his word among his people, that they might have everlasting life. And it hath become expedient that I, according to the will of God, that the prayers of those who have gone hence, who were the holy ones, should be fulfilled according to their faith, should make a record of these things which have been done, yea, a small record of that which hath taken place from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem, even down until the present time. Therefore I do make my record from the accounts which have been given by those who were before me until the commencement of my day. And then I do make a record of the things which I have seen with mine own eyes. And I know the record which I make to be a just and a true record. Nevertheless, there are many things which, according to our language, we are not able to write. And now I make an end of my saying, which is of myself, and proceed to give my account of the things which have been before me. I am Mormon, and a pure descendant of Lehi. I have reason to bless my God and my Savior, Jesus Christ, that he brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem. And no one knew it save it were himself and those whom he brought out of that land, and that he hath given me and my people so much knowledge unto the salvation of our souls. Surely he hath blessed the house of Jacob, and hath been merciful unto the seed of Joseph. And insomuch as the children of Lehi have kept his commandments, he hath blessed them and prospered them according to his word. Yea, and surely shall he again bring a remnant of the seed of Joseph to the knowledge of the Lord their God. And as surely as the Lord liveth, will he gather in from the four quarters of the earth all the remnant of the seed of Jacob, who are scattered abroad upon all the face of the earth. 
And as he hath covenanted with all the house of Jacob, even so shall the covenant wherewith he hath covenanted with the house of Jacob be fulfilled in his own due time, unto the restoring all the house of Jacob, unto the knowledge of the covenant that he hath covenanted with them. And then shall they know their Redeemer, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then shall they be gathered in from the four quarters of the earth unto their own lands, from whence they have been dispersed. Yea, as the Lord liveth, so shall it be. Amen. Now it came to pass that the people of the Nephites did all return to their own lands. In the twenty and sixth year, every man with his family, his flocks, and his herds, his horses, and his cattle, and all things whatsoever did belong unto them. And it came to pass that they had not eaten up all their provisions. Therefore they did take with them all that they had not devoured, of all their grain of every kind, and their gold, and their silver, and all their precious things. And they did return to their own lands, and their possessions, both on the north and on the south, both on the land northward and on the land southward. And they granted unto those robbers who had entered into a covenant to keep the peace of the land, who were desirous to remain Lamanites, lands according to their numbers, that they might have with their labors wherewith to subsist upon. And thus they did establish peace in all the land. They began again to prosper in a wax crate, and the twenty and sixth and seventh years passed away. And there was great order in the land, and they had formed their laws according to equity and justice. And now there was nothing in all the land to hinder the people from prospering continually, except they should fall into transgression. And now it was Gidgadoni and the judge Laconius, and those who had been appointed leaders, who had established this great peace in the land. And it came to pass that there were many cities built anew, and there were many old cities repaired, and there were many highways cast up, and many roads made which led from city to city, and from land to land, and from place to place. And thus passed away the twenty and eighth year, and the people had continual peace. But it came to pass, in the twenty and ninth year, there began to be some disputings among the people. And some were lifted up unto pride and boastings, because of their exceedingly great riches, yea, even unto great persecutions. For there were many merchants in the land, and also many lawyers, and many officers. And the people began to be distinguished by ranks, according to their riches, and their chances for learning. Yea, some were ignorant because of their poverty, and others did receive great learning because of their riches. Some were lifted up in pride, and others were exceedingly humble. Some did return railing for railing, while others would receive railing and persecutions and all manner of afflictions, and would not turn and revile again but were humble and penitent before God. And thus there became a great inequality in all the land, insomuch that the church began to be broken up, yea, insomuch that in the thirtieth year the church was broken up in all the land, save it were among a few of the Lamanites who were converted unto the true faith, and they would not depart from it, for they were firm and steadfast and immovable, willing with all diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. Now the cause of this iniquity of the people was this. Satan had great power under the stirring up of the people to do all manner of iniquity, and to the puffing them up with pride, tempting them to seek for power and authority and riches and the vain things of the world. And thus Satan did lead away the hearts of the people to do all manner of iniquity. Therefore they had enjoyed peace but a few years. And thus, in the commencement of the thirtieth year, the people having been delivered up for the space of a long time to be carried about by the temptations of the devil, whithersoever he desired to carry them, and to do whatsoever iniquity he desired they should. And thus, in the commencement of this, the thirtieth year, they were in a state of awful wickedness. Now they did not sin ignorantly, for they knew the will of God concerning them. For it had been taught unto them, 
Therefore they did willfully rebel against God. And now it was in the days of Laconius, the son of Laconius, for Laconius did fill the seat of his father and did govern the people that year. And there began to be men inspired from heaven and sent forth, standing among the people in all the land, preaching and testifying boldly of the sins and iniquities of the people, and testifying unto them concerning the redemption which the Lord would make for his people, or, in other words, the resurrection of Christ. And they did testify boldly of his death and sufferings. Now there were many of the people who were exceedingly angry because of those who testified of these things. And those who were angry were chiefly the chief judges, and they who had been high priests and lawyers. Yea, all those who were lawyers were angry with those who testified of these things. Now there was no lawyer, nor judge, nor high priest that could have power to condemn any one to death, save their condemnation was signed by the governor of the land. Now there were many of those who testified of the things pertaining to Christ, who testified boldly, who were taken and put to death secretly by the judges, that the knowledge of their death came not unto the governor of the land until after their death. Now behold, this was contrary to the laws of the land, that any man should be put to death except they had power from the governor of the land. Therefore a complaint came up unto the land of Zarahemla, to the governor of the land, against these judges who had condemned the prophets of the Lord unto death, not according to the law. Now it came to pass that they were taken and brought up before the judge to be judged of the crime which they had done according to the law which had been given by the people. Now it came to pass that those judges had many friends and kindreds, and the remainder, yea, even almost all the lawyers and the high priests, gather themselves together and unite with the kindreds of those judges who were to be tried according to the law. And they did enter into a covenant one with another, yea, even into that covenant which was given by them of old, which covenant was given and administered by the devil, to combine against all righteousness. Therefore they did combine against the people of the Lord, and enter into a covenant to destroy them, and to deliver those who were guilty of murder from the grasp of justice, which was about to be administered according to the law. And they did set at defiance the law and the rights of their country. And they did covenant one with another to destroy the governor and to establish a king over the land, that the land should no more be at liberty, but should be subject unto kings. Now behold, I will show unto you that they did not establish a king over the land. But in this same year, yea, the thirtieth year, they did destroy upon the judgment seat, yea, did murder the chief judge of the land. And the people were divided one against another, and they did separate one from another into tribes, every man according to his family, and his kindred and friends. And thus they did destroy the government of the land. And every tribe did appoint a chief or a leader over them. And thus they became tribes and leaders of tribes. Now behold, there was no man among them save he had much family and many kindreds and friends. Therefore their tribes became exceedingly great. Now all this was done, and there were no wars as yet among them, and all this iniquity had come upon the people, because they did yield themselves unto the power of Satan. And the regulations of the government were destroyed, because of the secret combination of the friends and kindreds of those who murdered the prophets. And they did cause a great contention in the land, insomuch that the more righteous part of the people had nearly all become wicked. Yea, there were but few righteous men among them. And thus six years had not passed away, since the more part of the people had turned from their righteousness like the dog to his vomit, or like the sow to her wallowing in the mire. Now the secret combination which had brought so great iniquity upon the people, did gather themselves together, and did place at their head a man whom they did call Jacob. And they did call him their king, therefore he became a king over this wicked band, 
and he was one of the chiefest who had given his voice against the prophets whom testified of Jesus. And it came to pass that they were not so strong in number as the tribes of the people, who were united together, save it were their leaders, did establish their laws, every one according to his tribe. Nevertheless, they were enemies, notwithstanding they were not a righteous people. Yet they were united in the hatred of those who had entered into a covenant to destroy the government. Therefore Jacob, seeing that their enemies were more numerous than they, he being the king of the band, therefore he commanded his people that they should take their flight into the northernmost part of the land, and there build up unto themselves a kingdom, until they were joined by dissenters, for he flattered them that there would be many dissenters, and they become sufficiently strong to contend with the tribes of the people, and they did so. And so speedy was their march that it could not be impeded until they had gone forth out of the reach of the people. And thus ended the thirtieth year, and thus were the affairs of the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the thirty and first year that they were divided into tribes, every man according to his family, kindred, and friends. Nevertheless, they had come to an agreement that they would not go to war one with another, but they were not united as to their laws and their manner of government, for they were established according to the minds of those who were their chiefs and their leaders. But they did establish very strict laws that one tribe should not trespass against another, insomuch that in some degree they had peace in the land. Nevertheless, their hearts were turned from the Lord their God, and they did stone the prophets, and did cast them out from among them. And it came to pass that Nephi, having been visited by angels, and also the voice of the Lord, therefore having seen angels, and being eyewitness, and having had power given unto him, that he might know concerning the ministry of Christ, and also being eyewitness to their quick return from righteousness unto their wickedness and abominations, therefore being grieved for the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, went forth among them in that same year and began to testify boldly repentance and remission of sins through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did minister many things unto them, and all of them cannot be written, and a part of them would not suffice, therefore they are not written in this book. And Nephi did minister with power and with great authority. And it came to pass that they were angry with him, even because he had greater power than they. For it were not possible that they could disbelieve his words, for so great was his faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, that angels did minister unto him daily. And in the name of Jesus did he cast out devils and unclean spirits, and even his brother did he raise from the dead, after he had been stoned and suffered death by the people. And the people saw it and did witness of it, and were angry with him because of his power, and he did also do many more miracles in the sight of the people in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass that the thirty and first year did pass away, and there were but few who were converted unto the Lord. But as many as were converted did truly signify unto the people that they had been visited by the power and spirit of God, which was in Jesus Christ, in whom they believed. And as many as had devils cast out from them, and were healed of their sicknesses and their infirmities, did truly manifest unto the people that they had been wrought upon by the Spirit of God, and had been healed. And they did show forth signs also, and did do some miracles among the people. Thus passed away the thirty and second year also. And Nephi did cry unto the people in the commencement of the thirty and third year, and he did preach unto them repentance and remission of sins. Now I would have you to remember also that there were none who were brought unto repentance who were not baptized with water. Therefore there were ordained of Nephi men unto this ministry 
that all such as should come unto them should be baptized with water, and this as a witness and a testimony before God, and unto the people, that they had repented and received a remission of their sins. And there were many in the commencement of this year that were baptized under repentance, and thus the more part of the year did pass away. And now it came to pass that according to our record, and we know our record to be true, for behold, it was a just man who did keep the record, for he truly did many miracles in the name of Jesus. And there was not any man who could do a miracle in the name of Jesus, save he were cleansed every whit from his iniquity. And now it came to pass, if there was no mistake made by this man in the reckoning of our time, the thirty and third year had passed away. And the people began to look with great earnestness for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel the Lamanite, yea, for the time that there should be darkness for the space of three days over the face of the land. And there began to be great doubtings and disputations among the people, notwithstanding so many signs had been given. And it came to pass in the thirty and fourth year, in the first month on the fourth day of the month, there arose a great storm, such an one as never had been known in all the land. And there was also a great and terrible tempest, and there was terrible thunder, insomuch that it did shake the whole earth, as if it was about to divide asunder. And there were exceedingly sharp lightnings, such as never had been known in all the land. And the city of Zarahemla did take fire, and the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof were drowned. And the earth was carried up upon the city of Moroniha, that in the place of the city there became a great mountain, and there was a great and terrible destruction in the land southward. But behold, there was a more great and terrible destruction in the land northward. For behold, the whole face of the land was changed because of the tempest and the whirlwinds and the thunderings and the lightnings and the exceedingly great quaking of the whole earth. And the highways were broken up, and the level roads were spoiled, and many smooth places became rough, and many great and notable cities were sunk, and many were burned, and many were shaken till the buildings thereof had fallen to the earth, and the inhabitants thereof were slain, and the places were left desolate. And there were some cities which remained, but the damage thereof was exceedingly great. And there were many in them who were slain. And there were some who were carried away in the whirlwind. And whither they went, no man knoweth, save they know that they were carried away. And thus the face of the whole earth became deformed, because of the tempests and the thunderings and the lightnings and the quaking of the earth. And behold, the rocks were rent in twain. They were broken up upon the face of the whole earth, insomuch that they were found in broken fragments and in seams and in cracks upon all the face of the land. And it came to pass that when the thunderings and the lightnings and the storm and the tempest and the quakings of the earth did cease, for behold, they did last for about the space of three hours, and it was said by some that the time was greater. Nevertheless, all these great and terrible things were done in about the space of three hours. And then, behold, there was darkness upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that there was thick darkness upon all the face of the land, insomuch that the inhabitants thereof, who had not fallen, could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could be no light because of the darkness, neither candles, neither torches, neither could there be fire kindled with their fine and exceedingly dry wood, so that there could not be any light at all. And there was not any light seen, neither fire, nor glimmer, neither the sun, nor the moon, nor the stars. For so great were the mists of darkness which were upon the face of the land, and it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days that there was no light seen. And there was great mourning and howling and weeping among all the people continually. Yea, great were the groanings of the people because of the darkness and the great destruction 
which had come upon them. And in one place they were heard to cry, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and then would our brethren have been spared, and they would not have been burned in that great city, Zarahemla. And in another place they were heard to cry and mourn, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and had not killed and stoned the prophets, and cast them out. Then would our mothers and our fair daughters and our children have been spared, and not have been buried up in that great city Moronaiha. And thus were the howlings of the people great and terrible. And it came to pass that there was a voice heard among all the inhabitants of the earth upon all the face of this land, crying, Woe, woe, woe unto this people! Woe unto the inhabitants of the whole earth, except they shall repent. For the devil laugheth, and his angels rejoice, because of the slain of the fair sons and daughters of my people. And it is because of their iniquity and abominations that they are fallen. Behold, that great city Zarahemla have I burned with fire, and the inhabitants thereof. And behold, that great city Moroni have I caused to be sunk in the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof to be drowned. And behold, that great city Moroni have I covered with earth, and the inhabitants thereof to hide their iniquities and their abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gilgal have I caused to be sunk, and the inhabitants thereof to be buried up in the depths of the earth. Yea, in the city of Onaiha, and the inhabitants thereof, and the city of Mokum, and the inhabitants thereof, and the city of Jerusalem, and the inhabitants thereof, and waters have I caused to come up in the stead thereof, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints shall not come up any more unto me against them. And behold, the city of Gideandi, and the city of Gadiamna, and the city of Jacob, and the city of Gimgimno, all these have I caused to be sunk, and made hills and valleys in the places thereof. And the inhabitants thereof have I buried up in the depths of the earth, to hide their wickedness and abominations from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up any more unto me against them. And behold, that great city, Jacobugath, which was inhabited by the people of King Jacob, have I caused to be burned with fire because of their sins and their wickedness, which was above all the wickedness of the whole earth, because of their secret murders and combinations. For it was they that did destroy the peace of my people and the government of the land. Therefore I did cause them to be burned, to destroy them from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints should not come up unto me any more against them. And behold the city of Laman, and the city of Josh, and the city of Gad, and the city of Kishkumen, have I caused to be burned with fire, and the inhabitants thereof because of their wickedness, and casting out the prophets, and stoning those whom I did send, to declare unto them concerning their wickedness and their abominations. And because they did cast them all out, that there were none righteous among them, I did send down fire and destroy them, that their wickedness and abominations might be hid from before my face, that the blood of the prophets and the saints whom I sent among them might not cry unto me from the ground against them. And many great destructions have I caused to come upon this land and upon this people because of their wickedness and their abominations. O all ye that are spared, because ye were more righteous than they, will ye not now return unto me, and repent of your sins, and be converted, that I may heal you? Yea, verily I say unto you, If ye will come unto me, ye shall have eternal life. Behold, mine arm of mercy is extended towards you, and whosoever will come, him will I receive, and blessed are those who come unto me. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
I created the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. And in me hath the Father glorified his name. I came unto my own, and my own received me not. And the scriptures concerning my coming are fulfilled. And as many as have received me, to them have I given to become the sons of God. And even so will I to as many as shall believe on my name. For behold, by me redemption cometh, and in me is the law of Moses fulfilled. I am the light and the life of the world. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And ye shall offer up unto me no more the shedding of blood. Yea, your sacrifices and your burnt offerings shall be done away, for I will accept none of your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. And ye shall offer for a sacrifice unto me a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And whoso cometh unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, him will I baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost, even as the Lamanites, because of their faith in me, at the time of their conversion were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and they knew it not. Behold, I have come unto the world to bring redemption unto the world, to save the world from sin. Therefore, whoso repenteth and cometh unto me as a little child, him will I receive. For of such is the kingdom of God. Behold, for such I have laid down my life, and have taken it up again. Therefore repent, and come unto me, ye ends of the earth, and be saved. And now behold, it came to pass, that all the people of the land did hear these sayings, and did witness of it. And after these sayings, there was silence in the land for the space of many hours. For so great was the astonishment of the people, that they did cease lamenting and howling for the loss of their kindred, which had been slain. Therefore there was silence in all the land for the space of many hours. And it came to pass that there came a voice again unto the people, and all the people did hear and did witness of it, saying, O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, who are descendants of Jacob, yea, who are of the house of Israel, how oft have I gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and have nourished you. And again, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, who have fallen. Yea, O ye people of the house of Israel, ye that dwell at Jerusalem, as ye that have fallen. Yea, how oft would I have gathered you as a hen gathereth her chickens, and ye would not. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, if ye will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart. But if not, O house of Israel, the places of your dwellings shall become desolate until the time of the fulfilling of the covenant to your fathers. And now it came to pass that after the people had heard these words, behold, they began to weep and howl again because of the loss of their kindred and friends. And it came to pass that thus did the three days pass away, and it was in the morning, and the darkness dispersed from off the face of the land. And the earth did cease to tremble, and the rocks did cease to rend, and the dreadful groanings did cease, and all the tumultuous noises did pass away. And the earth did cleave together again, that it stood. And the mourning, and the weeping, and the wailing of the people who were spared alive did cease, and their mourning was turned into joy and their lamentations into the praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord Jesus Christ, their Redeemer. And thus far were the scriptures fulfilled, which had been spoken by the prophets. And it was the more righteous part of the people who were saved, and it was they who received the prophets and stoned them not. And it was they who had not shed the blood of the saints, who were spared. And they were spared, and were not sunk and buried up in the earth, and they were not drowned in the depths of the sea, and they were not burned by fire, neither were they fallen upon and crushed to death, and they were not carried away in the whirlwind, neither were they overpowered by the vapor of smoke and of darkness. And now, whoso readeth, let him understand. He that hath the scriptures, let him search them, and see, and behold, if all these deaths 
and destructions by fire and by smoke and by tempest and by whirlwinds and by the opening of the earth to receive them. And all these things are not unto the fulfilling of the prophecies of many of the holy prophets. Behold, I say unto you, Yea, many have testified of these things at the coming of Christ, and were slain because they testified of these things. Yea, the prophet Zenos did testify of these things, and also Zenoch spake concerning these things, because they testified particularly concerning us, who are the remnant of their seed. Behold, our father Jacob also testified concerning a remnant of the seed of Joseph. And behold, are not we a remnant of the seed of Joseph? And these things which testify of us, are they not written upon the plates of brass, which our father Lehi brought out of Jerusalem? And it came to pass that in the ending of the thirty and fourth year, behold, I will show unto you that the people of Nephi who were spared and also those who had been called Lamanites, who had been spared, did have great favors shown unto them, and great blessings poured out upon their heads, insomuch that soon after the ascension of Christ into heaven, he did truly manifest himself unto them, showing his body unto them, and ministering unto them, and an account of his ministry shall be given hereafter. Therefore, for this time, I make an end of my sayings. Jesus Christ did show himself unto the people of Nephi, as the multitude were gathered together in the land bountiful, and did minister unto them. And on this wise did he show himself unto them. Now it came to pass that there was a great multitude gathered together of the people of Nephi round about the temple, which was in the land bountiful. And they were marveling and wondering one with another, and were showing one to another the great and marvelous change which had taken place. And they were also conversing about this Jesus Christ of whom the sign had been given concerning his death. And it came to pass that while they were thus conversing one with another, they heard a voice as if it came out of heaven, and they cast their eyes round about. For they understood not the voice which they heard, and it was not a harsh voice, neither was it a loud voice, Nevertheless, and notwithstanding it being a small voice, it did pierce them that did hear to the center, insomuch that there was no part of their frame that did not cause to quake. Yea, it did pierce them to the very soul, and did cause their hearts to burn. And it came to pass that again they heard the voice, and they understood it not. And again the third time they did hear the voice, and did open their eyes to hear it and their eyes were towards the sound thereof. And they did look steadfastly towards heaven from whence the sound came. And behold, the third time they did understand the voice which they heard, and it said unto them, Behold, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, in whom I have glorified my name, hear ye him. And it came to pass, as they understood, they cast their eyes up again towards heaven, and behold, they saw a man descending out of heaven, and he was clothed in a white robe, and he came down and stood in the midst of them, and the eyes of the whole multitude were turned upon him, and they durst not open their mouths even one to another, and wist not what it meant, for they thought it was an angel that had appeared unto them. And it came to pass that he stretched forth his hand, and spake unto the people, saying, Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world, and I have drunk out of that bitter cup which the Father hath given me, and have glorified the Father in taking upon me the sins of the world, in the which I have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, the whole multitude fell to the earth, for they remembered that it had been prophesied among them that Christ should show himself unto them after his ascension into heaven. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto them, saying, Arise, and come forth unto me, that ye may thrust your hands into my side, and also that ye may feel the prints of the nails in my hands and in my feet 
that ye may know that I am the God of Israel, and the God of the whole earth, and have been slain for the sins of the world. And it came to pass that the multitude went forth and thrust their hands into his side, and did feel the prints of the nails in his hands and in his feet. And this they did do going forth one by one, until they had all gone forth, and did see with their eyes, and did feel with their hands, and did know of a surety, and did bear record that it was he of whom it was written by the prophets that should come. And when they had all gone forth and had witnessed for themselves, they did cry out with one accord, saying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Most High God. And they did fall down at the feet of Jesus and did worship him. And it came to pass that he spake unto Nephi, for Nephi was among the multitude, and he commanded him that he should come forth. And Nephi arose and went forth and bowed himself before the Lord and did kiss his feet. And the Lord commanded him that he should arise, and he arose and stood before him. And the Lord said unto him, I give unto you power, that ye shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. And again the Lord called others, and said unto them, Likewise. And he gave unto them power to baptize. And he said unto them, On this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Verily I say unto you, that whoso repenteth of his sins through your words and desire to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then shall ye immerse them in the water, and come forth again out of the water. And after this manner shall ye baptize in my name. For behold, verily I say unto you, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one, and I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the Father and I are one. And according as I have commanded you, thus shall ye baptize. And there shall be no disputations among you, as there have hitherto been, neither shall there be disputations among you concerning the points of my doctrine, as there have hitherto been. For verily, verily, I say unto you, He that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine, to stir up the hearts of men with anger one against another. But this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, I will declare unto you my doctrine, and this is my doctrine, and it is the doctrine which the Father hath given unto me. And I bear record of the Father, and the Father beareth record of me, and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. And I bear record that the Father commandeth all men everywhere to repent and believe in me. And whoso believeth in me, and is baptized, the same shall be saved, and they are they who shall inherit the kingdom of God. And whoso believeth not in me, and is not baptized, shall be damned. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that this is my doctrine, and I bear record of it from the Father. And whoso believeth in me, believeth in the Father also. And unto him will the Father bear record of me, for he will visit him with fire and with the Holy Ghost. And thus will the Father bear record of me, and the Holy Ghost will bear record unto him of the Father and me. For the Father and I and the Holy Ghost are one. And again I say unto you, ye must repent and become as a little child, and be baptized in my name, or ye can in no wise receive these things. And again I say unto you, ye must repent and be baptized in my name, and become as a little child, or ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that this is my doctrine, and whoso buildeth upon this, buildeth upon my rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. 
And whoso shall declare more or less than this, and establish it for my doctrine, the same cometh of evil, and is not built upon my rock, but he buildeth upon a sandy foundation. And the gates of hell stand open to receive such, when the floods come, and the winds beat upon them. Therefore go forth unto the people, and declare the words which I have spoken unto the ends of the earth. And it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words unto Nephi, and to those who had been called, now the number of them who had been called and received power and authority to baptize was twelve. And behold, he stretched forth his hand unto the multitude, and cried unto them, saying, Blessed are ye, if ye shall give heed unto the words of these twelve whom I have chosen from among you, to minister unto you, and to be your servants, and unto them I have given power, that they may baptize you with water. And after that ye are baptized with water, behold, I will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Therefore blessed are ye, if ye shall believe in me, and be baptized. After that ye have seen me, and know that I am. And again, more blessed are they who shall believe in your words, because that ye shall testify that ye have seen me, and that ye know that I am. Yea, blessed are they who shall believe in your words, and come down in the depths of humility, and be baptized. For they shall be visited with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and shall receive a remission of their sins. Yea, blessed are the poor in spirit who come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And again, blessed are all they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are all they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are all the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are all the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are all they who are persecuted for my name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For ye shall have great joy, and be exceedingly glad, for great shall be your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose its savor, wherewith shall the earth be salted? The salt shall be thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the light of this people. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Therefore let your light so shine before this people, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, One jot nor one tittle hath not passed away from the law, but in me it hath all been fulfilled. And behold, I have given you the law and the commandments of my Father, that ye shall believe in me, and that ye shall repent of your sins, and come unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Behold, ye have the commandments before you, and the law is fulfilled. Therefore come unto me, and be ye saved. For verily I say unto you, that except ye shall keep my commandments, which I have commanded you at this time, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, and it is also written before you, that thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment of God. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of his judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. 
Therefore, if ye shall come unto me, or shall desire to come unto me, and rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, go thy way unto thy brother, and first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come unto me with full purpose of heart, and I will receive you. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time he shall get thee, and thou shalt be cast into prison. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, until thou hast paid the uttermost senine. And while ye are in prison, can ye pay even one senine? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Nay. Behold, it is written by them of old time, that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery already in his heart. Behold, I give unto you a commandment that ye suffer none of these things to enter into your heart. For it is better that ye should deny yourselves of these things, wherein ye will take up your cross, than that ye should be cast into hell. It hath been written that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whoso shall marry her who is divorced, committeth adultery. And again it is written, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But verily, verily, I say unto you, Swear not at all neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair black or white. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever cometh of more than these is evil. And behold, it is written, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye shall not resist evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. And behold, it is written also, that thou shalt love thy neighbors and hate thine enemies. But behold, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. Therefore those things which were of old time, which were under the law, in me are all fulfilled. Old things are done away, and all things have become new. Therefore I would that ye should be perfect, even as I or your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Verily, verily, I say that I would that ye should do alms unto the poor. But take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father who is in heaven. Therefore, when ye shall do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as will hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not do as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy father who is in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen, 
for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou fasteth, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father who is in secret, and thy Father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If, therefore, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If, therefore, the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness! No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he looked upon the twelve whom he had chosen, and said unto them, Remember the words which I have spoken. For behold, ye are they whom I have chosen to minister unto this people. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, even so will he clothe you, if ye are not of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient is the day unto the evil thereof. Now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he turned again to the multitude, and did open his mouth unto them again, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, 
lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, who, if a son ask bread, will give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leadeth to destruction. And many there be who go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, he cast his eyes round about on the multitude, and said unto them, Behold, ye have heard the things which I taught before I ascended to my Father. Therefore, whoso remembereth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, him will I raise up at the last day. And it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he perceived that there were some among them who marveled and wondered what he would concerning the law of Moses. For they understood not the saying that old things had passed away, that all things had become new. And he said unto them, Marvel not that I said unto you that old things had passed away, and that all things had become new. Behold, I say unto you, that the law is fulfilled that was given unto Moses. Behold, I am he that gave the law, and I am he who covenanted with my people Israel. Therefore the law in me is fulfilled, for I have come to fulfill the law, therefore it hath an end. Behold, I do not destroy the prophets. For as many as have not been fulfilled in me, verily I say unto you, shall all be fulfilled. And because I said unto you that old things have passed away, I do not destroy that which hath been spoken concerning things which are to come. For behold, the covenant which I have made with my people is not all fulfilled, but the law which was given unto Moses hath an end in me. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me, and endure to the end, and he shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end will I give eternal life. Behold, I have given unto you the commandments. Therefore keep my commandments. And this is the law and the prophets, for they truly testified of me. Now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he said unto those twelve whom he had chosen, Ye are my disciples, and ye are a light unto this people, who are a remnant of the house of Joseph. 
and behold, this is the land of your inheritance, and the Father hath given it unto you. And not at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell it unto your brethren at Jerusalem. Neither at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell unto them concerning the other tribes of the house of Israel, whom the Father hath led away out of the land. This much did the Father command me, that I should tell unto them, that other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And now, because of stiff-neckedness and unbelief, they understood not my word. Therefore I was commanded to say no more of the Father concerning this thing unto them. But verily I say unto you, that the Father hath commanded me, and I tell it unto you, that ye were separated from among them because of their iniquity. Therefore it is because of their iniquity that they know not of you. And verily I say unto you again, that the other tribes hath the Father separated from them. And it is because of their iniquity that they know not of them. And verily I say unto you, that ye are they of whom I said, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And they understood me not, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles, for they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. And they understood me not, that I said they shall hear my voice. And they understood me not, that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice, that I should not manifest myself unto them, save it were by the Holy Ghost. But behold, ye have both heard my voice, and seen me, and ye are my sheep, and ye are numbered among those whom the Father hath given me. And verily, verily, I say unto you, that I have other sheep which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem, neither in any parts of that land round about whither I have been to minister. For they of whom I speak are they who have not as yet heard my voice. Neither have I at any time manifested myself unto them. But I have received a commandment of the Father, that I shall go unto them, and that they shall hear my voice, and shall be numbered among my sheep, that there may be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore I go to show myself unto them. And I command you that ye shall write these sayings after I am gone, that if it so be that my people at Jerusalem, they who have seen me and been with me in my ministry, do not ask the Father in my name, that they may receive a knowledge of you by the Holy Ghost, and also of the other tribes whom they know not of, that these sayings which ye shall write shall be kept and shall be manifested unto the Gentiles, that through the fullness of the Gentiles the remnant of their seed, who shall be scattered forth upon the face of the earth because of their unbelief, may be brought in, or may be brought to a knowledge of me, the Redeemer. And then will I gather them in from the four quarters of the earth, and then will I fulfill the covenant which the Father hath made unto all the people of the house of Israel. And blessed are the Gentiles because of their belief in me, in and of the Holy Ghost, which witnesses unto them of me and of the Father. Behold, because of their belief in me, saith the Father, and because of the unbelief of you, O house of Israel, in the latter day shall the truth come unto the Gentiles, that the fullness of these things shall be made known unto them. But woe, saith the Father, unto the unbelieving of the Gentiles, for notwithstanding they have come forth upon the face of this land, and have scattered my people, who are of the house of Israel, and my people who are of the house of Israel have been cast out from among them, and have been trodden under feet by them, and because of the mercies of the Father unto the Gentiles, and also the judgments of the Father upon my people, who are of the house of Israel, verily, verily, I say unto you, that after all this, and I have caused my people, who are of the house of Israel, to be smitten, and to be afflicted, and to be slain, and to be cast out from among them, and to become hated by them, and to become a hiss and a byword among them, 
And thus commandeth the Father, that I should say unto you, At that day, when the Gentiles shall sin against my gospel, and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, and shall be lifted up in the pride of their hearts above all nations, and above all the people of the whole earth, and shall be filled with all manner of lyings, and of deceits, and of mischiefs, and all manner of hypocrisy, and murders, and priestcrafts, and whoredoms, and of secret abominations. And if they shall do all those things, and shall reject the fullness of my gospel, behold, saith the Father, I will bring the fullness of my gospel from among them. And then will I remember my covenant which I have made unto my people, O house of Israel, and I will bring my gospel unto them. And I will show unto thee, O house of Israel, that the Gentiles shall not have power over you. But I will remember my covenant unto you, O house of Israel, and ye shall come unto the knowledge of the fullness of my gospel. But if the Gentiles will repent and return unto me, saith the Father, Behold, they shall be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. And I will not suffer my people, who are of the house of Israel, to go through among them and tread them down, saith the Father. But if they will not turn unto me and hearken unto my voice, I will suffer them. Yea, I will suffer my people, O house of Israel, that they shall go through among them and shall tread them down. And they shall be as salt that hath lost its savor, which is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of my people, O house of Israel. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Thus hath the Father commanded me, that I should give unto this people this land for their inheritance. And then the words of the prophet Isaiah shall be fulfilled, which say, Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. Behold, now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he looked round about again on the multitude, and he said unto them, Behold, my time is at hand. I perceive that ye are weak, that ye cannot understand all my words, which I am commanded of the Father to speak unto you at this time. Therefore go ye unto your homes, and ponder upon the things which I have said, and ask of the Father in my name, that ye may understand, and prepare your minds for the morrow. And I come unto you again, but now I go unto the Father, and also to show myself unto the lost tribes of Israel. For they are not lost unto the Father, for he knoweth whither he hath taken them. And it came to pass, that when Jesus had thus spoken, he cast his eyes round about again on the multitude, and beheld they were in tears, and did look steadfastly upon him, as if they would ask him to tarry a little longer with them. And he said unto them, Behold, my bowels are filled with compassion towards you. Have ye any that are sick among you? Bring them hither. Have ye any that are lame, or blind, or halt, or maimed, or leprous, or that are withered, or that are deaf, or that are afflicted in any manner? Bring them hither, and I will heal them, for I have compassion upon you. My bowels are filled with mercy. For I perceive that ye desire that I should show unto you what I have done unto your brethren at Jerusalem. For I see that your faith is sufficient, that I should heal you. And it came to pass that when he had thus spoken, all the multitude with one accord did go forth with their sick, and their afflicted, and their lame, and with their blind, and with their dumb, and with all them that were afflicted in any manner, and he did heal them every one as they were brought forth unto him. And they did all, both they who had been healed and they who were whole, bow down at his feet and did worship him. And as many as could come for the multitude did kiss his feet, insomuch that they did bathe his feet with their tears. And it came to pass that he commanded that their little children should be brought. 
So they brought their little children and set them down upon the ground round about him. And Jesus stood in the midst, and the multitude gave way till they had all been brought unto him. And it came to pass that when they had all been brought, and Jesus stood in the midst, he commanded the multitude that they should kneel down upon the ground. And it came to pass that when they had knelt upon the ground, Jesus groaned within himself and said, Father, I am troubled because of the wickedness of the people of the house of Israel. And when he had said these words, he himself also knelt upon the earth. And behold, he prayed unto the Father, and the things which he prayed cannot be written. And the multitude did bear record who heard him. And after this manner do they bear record. The eye hath never seen, neither hath the ear heard, before so great and marvelous things as we saw and heard Jesus speak unto the Father. And no tongue can speak, neither can there be written by any man, neither can the hearts of men conceive so great and marvelous things as we both saw and heard Jesus speak. And no one can conceive of the joy which filled our souls at the time. We heard him pray for us unto the Father. And it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of praying unto the Father, he arose. But so great was the joy of the multitude that they were overcome. And it came to pass that Jesus spake unto them and bade them arise. And they arose from the earth. And he said unto them, Blessed are ye because of your faith. And now behold, my joy is full. And when he had said these words, he wept, and the multitude bare record of it. And he took their little children one by one, and blessed them, and prayed unto the Father for them. And when he had done this, he wept again. And he spake unto the multitude, and said unto them, Behold your little ones. And as they looked to behold, they cast their eyes towards heaven. And they saw the heavens open, and they saw angels descending out of heaven, as it were, in the midst of fire. And they came down and encircled those little ones about. And they were encircled about with fire, and the angels did minister unto them. And the multitude did see, and hear, and bear record. And they know that their record is true, for they all of them did see, and hear every man for himself. And they were in number about two thousand and five hundred souls, and they did consist of men, women, and children. And it came to pass that Jesus commanded his disciples that they should bring forth some bread and wine unto him. And while they were gone for bread and wine, he commanded the multitude that they should sit themselves down upon the earth. And when the disciples had come with bread and wine, he took of the bread and break and blessed it, and he gave unto the disciples and commanded that they should eat. And when they had eaten and were filled, he commanded that they should give unto the multitude. And when the multitude had eaten and were filled, he said unto the disciples, Behold, there shall one be ordained among you, and to him will I give power, that he shall break bread and bless it, and give it unto the people of my church, unto all those who shall believe and be baptized in my name. And this shall ye always observe to do, even as I have done, even as I have broken bread and blessed it and given it unto you. And this shall ye do in remembrance of my body, which I have shown unto you. And it shall be a testimony unto the Father that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. And it came to pass that when he said these words, he commanded his disciples that they should take of the wine of the cup and drink of it, that they should also give unto the multitude that they might drink of it. And it came to pass that they did so, and did drink of it, and were filled, and they gave unto the multitude, and they did drink, and they were filled. And when the disciples had done this, Jesus said unto them, Blessed are ye for this thing which ye have done, for this is fulfilling my commandments. And this doth witness unto the Father, that ye are willing to do that which I have commanded you. And this shall ye always do to those who repent, and are baptized in my name. And ye shall do it in remembrance of my blood, which I have shed for you, that ye may witness unto the Father, that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit 
to be with you. And I give unto you a commandment that ye shall do these things, and if ye shall always do these things, blessed are ye, for ye are built upon my rock. But whoso among you shall do more or less than these are not built upon my rock, but are built upon a sandy foundation. And when the rain descends, and the floods come, and the winds blow, and beat upon them, they shall fall, and the gates of hell are ready open to receive them. Therefore blessed are ye, if ye shall keep my commandments, which the Father hath commanded, that I should give unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must watch and pray always, lest ye be tempted by the devil, and ye be led away captive by him. And as I have prayed among you, even so shall ye pray in my church among my people, who do repent and are baptized in my name. Behold, I am the light. I have set an example for you. It came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words unto his disciples, he turned again unto the multitude and said unto them, Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, you must watch and pray always, lest ye enter into temptation. For Satan desireth to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Therefore ye must always pray unto the Father in my name. And whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, which is right, believing that ye shall receive, behold, it shall be given unto you. Pray in your families unto the Father always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. And behold, ye shall meet together oft, and ye shall not forbid any man from coming unto you when ye shall meet together. But suffer them that they may come unto you and forbid them not. But ye shall pray for them, and shall not cast them out. And if it so be that they come unto you oft, ye shall pray for them unto the Father in my name. Therefore hold up your light that it may shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up, that which ye have seen me do. Behold, ye see that I have prayed unto the Father, and ye all have witnessed. And ye see that I have commanded that none of you should go away, but rather have commanded that ye should come unto me, that ye might feel and see. Even so shall ye do unto the world. And whosoever breaketh this commandment suffereth himself to be led into temptation. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he turned his eyes again upon the disciples whom he had chosen, and said unto them, Behold, verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you another commandment, and then I must go unto my Father, that I may fulfill other commandments which he hath given me. And now behold, this is the commandment which I give unto you, that ye shall not suffer any one knowingly to partake of my flesh and blood unworthily, when ye shall minister it. For whoso eateth and drinketh my flesh and blood unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to his soul. Therefore, if ye know that a man is unworthy to eat and drink of my flesh and blood, ye shall forbid him. Nevertheless, ye shall not cast him out from among you. But ye shall minister unto him, and shall pray for him unto the Father, in my name. And if it so be that he repenteth, and is baptized in my name, then shall ye receive him, and shall minister unto him of my flesh and blood. But if he repent not, he shall not be numbered among my people, that he may not destroy my people. For behold, I know my sheep, and they are numbered. Nevertheless, ye shall not cast him out of your synagogues or your places of worship. For unto such shall ye continue to minister. For ye know not but what they will return and repent, and come unto me with full purpose of heart. And I shall heal them, and ye shall be the means of bringing salvation unto them. Therefore keep these sayings which I have commanded you, that ye come not under condemnation. For woe unto him whom the Father condemneth. And I give you these commandments because of the disputations which have been among you. And blessed are ye if ye have no disputations among you. And now I go unto the Father because it is expedient that I should go unto the Father for your sakes. 
It came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of these sayings, he touched with his hand the disciples whom he had chosen, one by one, even until he had touched them all, and spake unto them as he touched them. And the multitude heard not the words which he spake. Therefore they did not bear record. But the disciples bear record that he gave them power to give the Holy Ghost. And I will show unto you hereafter that this record is true. And it came to pass that when Jesus had touched them all, there came a cloud and overshadowed the multitude that they could not see Jesus. And while they were overshadowed, he departed from them and ascended into heaven. And the disciples saw and did bear record that he ascended again into heaven. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had ascended into heaven, the multitude did disperse, and every man did take his wife and his children and did return to his own home. And it was noised abroad among the people immediately, before it was yet dark, that the multitude had seen Jesus, and that he had ministered unto them, and that he would also show himself on the morrow unto the multitude. Yea, and even all the night it was noised abroad concerning Jesus, and insomuch did they send forth unto the people, that there were many, yea, an exceedingly great number, did labor exceedingly all that night, that they might be on the morrow in the place where Jesus should show himself unto the multitude. And it came to pass that on the morrow, when the multitude was gathered together, behold, Nephi and his brother, whom he had raised from the dead, whose name was Timothy, and also his son, whose name was Jonas, and also Methoni, and Mathonihah, his brother, and Cumin, and Cuminonhi, and Jeremiah, and Shemnon, and Jonas, and Zedekiah, and Isaiah. Now these were the names of the disciples whom Jesus had chosen. And it came to pass that they went forth and stood in the midst of the multitude. And behold, the multitude was so great that they did cause that they should be separated into twelve bodies. And the twelve did teach the multitude. And behold, they did cause that the multitude should kneel down upon the face of the earth, and should pray unto the Father in the name of Jesus. And the disciples did pray unto the Father also in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass that they arose and ministered unto the people. And when they had ministered those same words which Jesus had spoken, nothing varying from the words which Jesus had spoken, Behold, they knelt again and prayed to the Father in the name of Jesus. And they did pray for that which they most desired. And they desired that the Holy Ghost should be given unto them. And when they had thus prayed, they went down under the water's edge, and the multitude followed them. And it came to pass that Nephi went down into the water and was baptized. And he came up out of the water and began to baptize. And he baptized all those whom Jesus had chosen. It came to pass, when they were all baptized, and had come up out of the water, the Holy Ghost did fall upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And behold, they were encircled about as if it were by fire, and it came down from heaven, and the multitude did witness it, and did bear record, and angels did come down out of heaven, and did minister unto them. And it came to pass that while the angels were ministering unto the disciples, behold, Jesus came and stood in the midst and ministered unto them. And it came to pass that he spake unto the multitude and commanded them that they should kneel down again upon the earth, and also that his disciples should kneel down upon the earth. And it came to pass that when they had all knelt down upon the earth, he commanded his disciples that they should pray. And behold, they began to pray, and they did pray unto Jesus, calling him their Lord and their God. And it came to pass that Jesus departed out of the midst of them, and went a little way off from them, and bowed himself to the earth. And he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast given the Holy Ghost unto these whom I have chosen. And it is because of their belief in me that I have chosen them out of the world. Father, I pray thee that thou wilt give the Holy Ghost unto all them that shall believe in their words. Father, thou hast given them the Holy Ghost because they believe in me.
and thou seest that they believe in me, because thou hearest them. And they pray unto me, and they pray unto me, because I am with them. And now, Father, I pray unto thee for them, and also for all those who shall believe on their words, that they may believe in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me, that we may be one. And it came to pass that when Jesus had thus prayed unto the Father, he came unto his disciples, and behold, they did still continue without ceasing to pray unto him. And they did not multiply many words, for it was given unto them what they should pray, and they were filled with desire. And it came to pass that Jesus blessed them as they did pray unto him, and his countenance did smile upon them, and the light of his countenance did shine upon them. And behold, they were as white as the countenance and also the garments of Jesus. And behold, the whiteness thereof did exceed all the whiteness, yea, even there could be nothing upon earth so white as the whiteness thereof. And Jesus said unto them, Pray on. Nevertheless, they did not cease to pray. And he turned from them again, and went a little way off, and bowed himself to the earth. And he prayed again unto the Father, saying, Father, I thank thee that thou hast purified those whom I have chosen, because of their faith. And I pray for them, and also for them who shall believe on their words, that they may be purified in me, through faith on their words, even as they are purified in me. Father, I pray not for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me out of the world, because of their faith, that they may be purified in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me, that we may be one, that I may be glorified in them. And when Jesus had spoken these words, he came again unto his disciples, and behold, they did pray steadfastly without ceasing unto him, and he did smile upon them again. And behold, they were white even as Jesus. And it came to pass that he went again a little way off, and prayed unto the Father. And tongue cannot speak the words which he prayed, neither can be written by man the words which he prayed. And the multitude did hear and do bear record, and their hearts were open, and they did understand in their hearts the words which he prayed. Nevertheless, so great and marvelous were the words which he prayed, that they cannot be written, neither can they be uttered by man. And it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of praying, he came again to the disciples and said unto them, So great faith have I never seen among all the Jews. Wherefore, I could not show unto them so great miracles because of their unbelief. Verily I say unto you, There are none of them that have seen so great things as ye have seen, neither have they heard so great things as ye have heard. And it came to pass that he commanded the multitude that they should cease to pray, and also his disciples. And he commanded them that they should not cease to pray in their hearts. And he commanded them that they should arise and stand up upon their feet. And they arose up and stood upon their feet. And it came to pass that he brake bread again and blessed it and gave it to the disciples to eat. And when they had eaten, he commanded them that they should break bread and give unto the multitude. And when they had given unto the multitude, he also gave them wine to drink and commanded them that they should give unto the multitude. Now there had been no bread, neither wine, brought by the disciples, neither by the multitude. But he truly gave unto them bread to eat, and also wine to drink. And he said unto them, He that eateth this bread eateth of my body to a soul, and he that drinketh of this wine drinketh of my blood to a soul. And a soul shall never hunger nor thirst, but shall be filled. Now when the multitude had all eaten and drunk, behold, they were filled with the Spirit, and they did cry out with one voice, and gave glory to Jesus, whom they both saw and heard. And it came to pass that when they had all given glory unto Jesus, he said unto them, Behold now, I finish the commandment which the Father hath commanded me concerning this people, who are a remnant of the house of Israel. You remember that I spake unto you, and said that when the words of Isaiah should be fulfilled, behold, they are written, ye have them before you, therefore search them. And verily, verily, I say unto you, that when they shall be fulfilled, 
Then is the fulfilling of the covenant which the Father hath made unto his people, O house of Israel. And then shall the remnants which shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth be gathered in from the east, and from the west, and from the south, and from the north. And they shall be brought to the knowledge of the Lord their God, who hath redeemed them. And the Father hath commanded me that I should give unto you this land for your inheritance. And I say unto you, that if the Gentiles do not repent, after the blessing which they shall receive, after they have scattered my people, then shall ye, who are a remnant of the house of Jacob, go forth among them, and ye shall be in the midst of them, who shall be many, and ye shall be among them as a lion among the beasts of the forest, and as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he goeth through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And I will gather my people together as a man gathers his sheaves into the floor. For I will make my people, with whom the Father hath covenanted, yea, I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. And behold, I am he who doeth it. And it shall come to pass, saith the Father, that the sword of my justice shall hang over them at that day. And except they repent, it shall fall upon them, saith the Father, yea, even upon all the nations of the Gentiles. And it shall come to pass that I will establish my people, O house of Israel. And behold, this people will I establish in this land, under the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem, and the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you. Behold, I am he of whom Moses spake concerning, Your prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off from among the people. Verily I say unto you, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have testified of me. And behold, ye are the children of the prophets, and ye are of the house of Israel, and ye are of the covenant which the Father made with your father, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, the Father having raised me up unto you first, and sent me to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities, and this because ye are the children of the covenant. And after that ye were blessed, then fulfilleth the Father the covenant which he made with Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed under the pouring out of the Holy Ghost through me upon the Gentiles, which blessing upon the Gentiles shall make them mighty above all unto the scattering of my people, O house of Israel, and they shall be a scourge unto the people of this land. Nevertheless, when they shall have received the fullness of my gospel, then if they shall harden their hearts, Against me I will return their iniquities upon their own heads, saith the Father. And I will remember the covenant which I have made with my people, and I have covenanted with them that I would gather them together in mine own due time, that I would give unto them again the land of their fathers for their inheritance, which is the land of Jerusalem, which is the promised land unto them forever, saith the Father. And it shall come to pass that the time cometh when the fullness of my gospel shall be preached unto them, and they shall believe in me that I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and shall pray unto the Father in my name. Then shall their watchmen lift up their voice, and with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye. Then will the Father gather them together again, and give unto them Jerusalem for the land of their inheritance. Then shall they break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Father hath comforted his people, 
he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Father hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Father, and the Father and I are one. And then shall be brought to pass that which is written, Awake, awake, again, and put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that my people shall know my name. Yea, in that day they shall know that I am he that doth speak. And then shall they say, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings unto them, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings unto them of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. And then shall a cry go forth, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch not that which is unclean, go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel shall be your rearward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently, he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred, more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men, so shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Verily, verily, I say unto you, All these things shall surely come, even as the Father hath commanded me. Then shall this covenant which the Father hath covenanted with his people be fulfilled. And then shall Jerusalem be inhabited again with my people, and it shall be the land of their inheritance. And verily I say unto you, I give unto you a sign, that ye may know the time when these things shall be about to take place, that I shall gather in from their long dispersion my people, O house of Israel, and shall establish again among them my Zion. And behold, this is the thing which I will give unto you for a sign. For verily I say unto you, that when these things which I declare unto you, and which I shall declare unto you hereafter of myself, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, which shall be given unto you of the Father, shall be made known unto the Gentiles, that they may know concerning this people, who are a remnant of the house of Jacob, and concerning this my people, who shall be scattered by them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when these things shall be made known unto them of the Father, and shall come forth of the Father from them unto you. For it is wisdom in the Father that they should be established in this land, and be set up as a free people by the power of the Father, that these things might come forth from them unto a remnant of your seed, that the covenant of the Father may be fulfilled, which he hath covenanted with his people, O house of Israel. Therefore, when these works and the works which shall be wrought among you hereafter shall come forth from the Gentiles unto your seed, which shall dwindle in unbelief because of iniquity, for thus it behooveth the Father that it should come forth from the Gentiles, that he may show forth his power unto the Gentiles. For this cause that the Gentiles, if they will not harden their hearts, that they may repent and come unto me and be baptized in my name, and know of the true points of my doctrine, that they may be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. And when these things come to pass, that thy seed shall begin to know these things, it shall be a sign unto them, that they may know that the work of the Father hath already commenced unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the people who are of the house of Israel. And when that day shall come, it shall come to pass that kings shall shut their mouths, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. For in that day 
For my sake shall the Father work a work, which shall be a great and a marvelous work among them. And there shall be among them those who will not believe it, although a man shall declare it unto them. But behold, the life of my servant shall be in my hand. Therefore they shall not hurt him, although he shall be marred because of them, yet I will heal him. For I will show unto them that my wisdom is greater than the cunning of the devil. Therefore it shall come to pass that whosoever will not believe in my words, who am Jesus Christ, which the Father shall cause him to bring forth unto the Gentiles, and shall give unto him power, that he shall bring them forth unto the Gentiles, it shall be done even as Moses said, they shall be cut off from among my people who are of the covenant. And my people, who are a remnant of Jacob, shall be among the Gentiles, yea, in the midst of them, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if ye go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Their hands shall be lifted up upon their adversaries, and all their enemies shall be cut off. Yea, woe be unto the Gentiles, except they repent. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Father, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of the land, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images I will also cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the works of thy hands. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And it shall come to pass that all lyings and deceivings and envyings and strifes and priestcrafts and whoredoms shall be done away. For it shall come to pass, saith the Father, that at that day whosoever will not repent and come unto my beloved Son, them will I cut off from among my people, O house of Israel, and I will execute vengeance and fury upon them, even as upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. But if they will repent and hearken unto my words, and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them, and they shall come in unto the covenant, and be numbered among this the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. And they shall assist my people, the remnant of Jacob, and also as many of the house of Israel as shall come, that they may build a city, which shall be called the New Jerusalem. Then shall they assist my people, that they may be gathered in, who are scattered upon all the face of the land, in unto the New Jerusalem. Then shall the power of heaven come down among them, and I also will be in the midst. And then shall the work of the Father commence at that day, even when this gospel shall be preached among the remnant of this people. Verily I say unto you, At that day shall the work of the Father commence among all the dispersed of my people. Yea, even the tribes which have been lost, which the Father hath led away out of Jerusalem. Yea, the work shall commence among all the dispersed of my people, with the Father to prepare the way whereby they may come unto me, that they may call on the Father in my name. Yea, and then shall the work commence with the Father among all nations in preparing the way, whereby his people may be gathered home to the land of their inheritance. And they shall go out from all nations, and they shall not go out in haste, nor go by flight. For I will go before them, saith the Father, and I will be their rearward. And then shall that which is written come to pass, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth in a singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. 
Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy Maker, thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not com comforted! Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together against thee, not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall revile against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And now, behold, I say unto you, that ye ought to search these things, yea, a commandment I give unto you, that ye search these things diligently, for great are the words of Isaiah. For surely he spake as touching all things concerning my people, which are of the house of Israel. Therefore it must needs be that he must speak also to the Gentiles. And all things that he spake have been, and shall be, even according to the words which he spake. Therefore give heed to my words, write the things which I have told you. And according to the time and the will of the Father, they shall go forth unto the Gentiles. And whosoever will hearken unto my words, and repenteth, and is baptized, the same shall be saved. Search the prophets, for many there be that testify of these things. Now it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he said unto them again, after he had expounded all the scriptures unto them which they had received, he said unto them, Behold, other scriptures I would that ye should write that ye have not. And it came to pass that he said unto Nephi, Bring forth the record which ye have kept. And when Nephi had brought forth the records and laid them before him, he cast his eyes upon them and said, Verily I say unto you, I commanded my servant Samuel the Lamanite, that he should testify unto this people, that at the day that the Father should glorify his name in me, that there were many saints who should arise from the dead, and should appear unto many, and should minister unto them. And he said unto them, Was it not so? And his disciples answered him, and said, Yea, Lord, Samuel did prophesy according to thy words, and they were all fulfilled. And Jesus said unto them, How be it that ye have not written this thing, that many saints did arise and appear unto many, and did minister unto them? And it came to pass that Nephi remembered that this thing had not been written. And it came to pass that Jesus commanded that it should be written. Therefore it was written according as he commanded.
And now it came to pass that when Jesus had expounded all the scriptures in one which they had written, he commanded them that they should teach the things which he had expounded unto them. And it came to pass that he commanded them that they should write the words which the Father had given unto Malachi, which he should tell unto them. And it came to pass that after they were written, he expounded them. And these are the words which he did tell unto them, saying, Thus said the Father unto Malachi, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the fields, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken against thee? Ye have said, It is vain to serve God, and what doth it profit, that we have kept his ordinances, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up, yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall, and he shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had told these things, he expounded them unto the multitude. And he did expound all things unto them, both great and small. And he saith, 
these scriptures which ye had not with you, the Father commanded that I should give unto you. For it was wisdom in him that they should be given unto future generations. And he did expound all things, even from the beginning, until the time that he should come in his glory, yea, even all things which should come upon the face of the earth, even until the elements should melt with fervent heat, and the earth should be wrapped together as a scroll, and the heavens and the earth should pass away. And even unto the great and last day, when all people and all kindreds and all nations and tongues shall stand before God to be judged of their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil, if they be good, to the resurrection of everlasting life, and if they be evil, to the resurrection of damnation, being on a parallel, the one on the one hand, and the other on the other hand, according to the mercy and the justice and the holiness which is in Christ, who was before the world began. And now there cannot be written in this book even a hundredth part of the things which Jesus did truly teach unto the people. But behold, the place of Nephi do contain the more part of the things which he taught the people. And these things have I written which are a lesser part of the things which he taught the people. And I have written them in the intent that they may be brought again unto this people from the Gentiles according to the words which Jesus hath spoken. And when they shall have received this, which is expedient that they should have first, to try their faith, and if it shall so be that they shall believe these things, then shall the greater things be made manifest unto them. And if it so be that they will not believe these things, then shall the greater things be withheld from them unto their condemnation. Behold, I was about to write them all which were engraven upon the plates of Nephi, but the Lord forbade it, saying, I will try the faith of my people. Therefore I, Mormon, do write the things which have been commanded me of the Lord. And now I, Mormon, make an end of my sayings, and proceed to write the things which have been commanded me. Therefore I would that ye should behold that the Lord truly did teach the people for the space of three days, and after that he did show himself unto them oft, and did break bread oft, and bless it, and give it unto them. And it came to pass that he did teach and minister unto the children of the multitude of whom hath been spoken, and he did loose their tongues, and they did speak unto their fathers great and marvelous things, even greater than he had revealed unto the people and he loosed their tongues that they could utter. And it came to pass that after he had ascended into heaven, the second time that he showed himself unto them, and had gone unto the Father, after having healed all their sick and their lame, and opened the eyes of their blind, and unstopped the ears of the deaf, and even had done all manner of cures among them, and raised a man from the dead, and had shown forth his power unto them, and had ascended unto the Father, behold, it came to pass on the morrow that the multitude gathered themselves together, and they both saw and heard these children. Yea, even babes did open their mouths, and utter marvelous things. And the things which they did utter were forbidden, that there should not any man write them. And it came to pass that the disciples whom Jesus had chosen began from that time forth to baptize and to teach as many as did come unto them, and as many as were baptized in the name of Jesus were filled with the Holy Ghost. And many of them saw and heard unspeakable things, which are not lawful to be written. And they taught and did minister one to another, and they had all things common among them, every man dealing justly one with another. And it came to pass that they did do all things even as Jesus had commanded them. And they who were baptized in the name of Jesus were called the Church of Christ. And it came to pass that as the disciples of Jesus were journeying and were preaching the things which they had both heard and seen, and were baptizing in the name of Jesus, it came to pass that the disciples were gathered together and were united in mighty prayer and fasting. And Jesus again showed himself unto them, for they were praying unto the Father in his name. And Jesus came and stood in the midst of them, and said unto them, What will ye that I should give unto you? And they said unto him, Lord, we will 
that thou wouldest tell us the name whereby we shall call this church. For there are disputations among the people concerning this matter. And the Lord said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Why is it that the people should murmur and dispute because of this thing? Have ye not read the scriptures, which say ye must take upon you the name of Christ, which is my name? For by this name shall ye be called at the last day. And whoso taketh upon him my name, and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved at the last day. Therefore whatsoever ye shall do, ye shall do it in my name. Therefore ye shall call the church in my name, and ye shall call upon the Father in my name, that he will bless the church for my sake. And how be it my church, save it be called in my name? For if a church be called in Moses' name, then it be Moses' church. Or if it be called in the name of a man, then it be the church of a man. But if it be called in my name, then it is my church, if it so be that they are built upon my gospel. Verily I say unto you, that ye are built upon my gospel. Therefore ye shall call whatsoever things ye do call in my name. Therefore if ye call upon the Father for the church, if it be in my name, the Father will hear you. And if it so be that the church is built upon my gospel, then will the Father show forth his own works in it. But if it be not built upon my gospel, and is built upon the works of men, or upon the works of the devil, verily I say unto you, they have joy in their works for a season, and by and by the end cometh, and they are hewn down, and cast into the fire, from whence there is no return. For their works do follow them, for it is because of their works that they are hewn down. Therefore remember the things which I have told you. Behold, I have given unto you my gospel, and this is the gospel which I have given unto you, that I came into the world to do the will of my Father, because my Father sent me. And my Father sent me that I might be lifted up upon the cross. And after that I had been lifted up upon the cross, that I might draw all men unto me, that as I have been lifted up by men, even so should men be lifted up by the Father, to stand before me, to be judged of their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. And for this cause have I been lifted up. Therefore, according to the power of the Father, I will draw all men unto me, that they may be judged according to their works. And it shall come to pass, that whoso repenteth and is baptized in my name shall be filled. And if he endureth to the end, behold, him will I hold guiltless before my Father at that day, when I shall stand to judge the world. And he that endureth not unto the end, the same as he that is also hewn down and cast into the fire, from whence they can no more return because of the justice of the Father. And this is the word which he hath given unto the children of men. And for this cause he fulfilleth the words which he hath given. And he lieth not, but fulfilleth all his words. And no unclean thing can enter into his kingdom. Therefore nothing entereth into his rest, save it be those who have washed their garments in my blood, because of their faith, and the repentance of all their sins, and their faithfulness unto the end. Now this is the commandment, Repent all ye ends of the earth, and come unto me, and be baptized in my name, that ye may be sanctified by the reception of the Holy Ghost, that ye may stand spotless before me at the last day. Verily, verily, I say unto you, This is my gospel, and ye know the things that ye must do in my church. For the works which ye have seen me do, that shall ye also do. For that which ye have seen me do, even that shall ye do. <clears throat> Therefore, if ye do these things, blessed are ye. For ye shall be lifted up at the last day. Write the things which ye have seen and heard, save it be those which are forbidden. Write the works of this people, which shall be, even as hath been written, of that which hath been. For behold, out of the books 
which have been written, and which shall be written, shall this people be judged. For by them shall their works be known unto men. And behold, all things are written by the Father. Therefore out of the books which shall be written shall the world be judged. And know ye that ye shall be judges of this people, according to the judgment which I shall give unto you, which shall be just. Therefore what manner of men ought ye to be? Verily I say unto you, even as I am. And now I go unto the Father, and verily I say unto you, Whatsoever things ye shall ask the Father in my name shall be given unto you. Therefore ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For he that asketh receiveth, and unto him that knocketh it shall be opened. And now behold, my joy is great, even unto fullness, because of you, and also this generation. Yea, and even the Father rejoiceth, and also all the holy angels, because of you and this generation, for none of them are lost. Behold, I would that ye should understand, for I mean them who are now alive of this generation, and none of them are lost, and in them I have fullness of joy. But behold, it sorroweth me because of the fourth generation from this generation. For they are led away captive by him, even as was the son of perdition. For they will sell me for silver and for gold, and for that which moth doth corrupt, and which thieves can break through and steal. And in that day will I visit them, even in turning their works upon their own heads. And it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. But wide is the gate, and broad the way which leads to death. And many there be that travel therein, until the night cometh, wherein no man can work. And it came to pass, when Jesus had said these words, he spake unto his disciples, one by one, saying unto them, What is it that ye desire of me, after that I am gone to the Father? And they all spake, save it were three, saying, We desire that after we have lived unto the age of man, that our ministry, wherein thou hast called us, may have an end, that we may speedily come unto thee in thy kingdom. And he said unto them, Blessed are ye, because ye desired this thing of me. Therefore, after that ye are seventy and two years old, ye shall come unto me in my kingdom, and with me ye shall find rest. And when he had spoken unto them, he turned himself unto the three, and said unto them, What will ye that I should do unto you when I am gone unto the Father? And they sorrowed, in their hearts, for they durst not speak unto him the thing which they desired. And he said unto them, Behold, I know your thoughts, and ye have desired the thing which is John, my beloved, who was with me in my ministry, before that I was lifted up by the Jews, desired of me. Therefore more blessed are ye, for ye shall never taste of death. But ye shall live to behold all the doings of the Father unto the children of men, even until all things shall be fulfilled, according to the will of the Father, when I shall come in my glory with the powers of heaven. And ye shall never endure the pains of death, but when I shall come in my glory, ye shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, from mortality to immortality. And then shall ye be blessed in the kingdom of my Father, and again, ye shall not have pain while ye shall dwell in the flesh, neither sorrow, save it be for the sins of the world. And all this will I do because of the thing which ye have desired of me. For ye have desired that ye might bring the souls of men unto me, while the world shall stand. And for this cause ye shall have fullness of joy, and ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my Father. Yea, your joy shall be full even as the Father hath given me fullness of joy. And ye shall be even as I am, and I am even as the Father, and the Father and I are one. And the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me, and the Father 
giveth the Holy Ghost unto the children of men because of me. It came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he touched every one of them with his finger, save it were the three who were to tarry. And then he departed, and behold, the heavens were opened, and they were caught up into heaven, and saw and heard unspeakable things. And it was forbidden them that they should utter. Neither was it given unto them power that they could utter the things which they saw and heard. Whether they were in the body or out of the body, they could not tell. For it did seem unto them like a transfiguration of them, that they were changed from this body of flesh into an immortal state, that they could behold the things of God. But it came to pass that they did again minister upon the face of the earth. Nevertheless, they did not minister of the things which they had heard and seen because of the commandment which was given them in heaven. And now, whether they were mortal or immortal, from the day of their transfiguration I know not. But this much I know, according to the record which hath been given, they did go forth upon the face of the land, and did minister unto all the people, uniting as many to the church as would believe in their preaching, baptizing them. And as many as were baptized did receive the Holy Ghost. And they were cast into prison by them who did not belong to the church, and the prisons could not hold them, for they were rent in twain. And they were cast down into the earth, but they did smite the earth with the word of God, insomuch that by his power they were delivered out of the depths of the earth, and therefore they could not dig pits sufficient to hold them. And thrice they were cast into a furnace and received no harm, and twice were they cast into a den of wild beasts. And behold, they did play with the beast as a child with a suckling lamb, and received no harm. And it came to pass that thus they did go forth among all the people of Nephi, and did preach the gospel of Christ unto all people upon the face of the land. And they were converted unto the Lord, and were united unto the church of Christ. And thus the people of that generation were blessed, according to the word of Jesus. And now I, Mormon, make an end of speaking concerning these things for a time. Behold, I was about to write the names of those who were never to taste of death, but the Lord forbade, therefore I write them not, for they are hid from the world. But behold, I have seen them, and they have ministered unto me. And behold, they will be among the Gentiles, and the Gentiles shall know them not. They will also be among the Jews, and the Jews shall know them not. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord seeth fit, in his wisdom, that they shall minister unto all the scattered tribes of Israel, and unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, and shall bring out of them unto Jesus many souls, that their desire may be fulfilled, and also because of the convincing power of God which is in them. And they are as the angels of God, and if they shall pray unto the Father in the name of Jesus, they can show themselves unto whatsoever man it seemeth them good. Therefore great and marvelous works shall be wrought by them before the great and coming day, when all people must surely stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yea, even among the Gentiles shall there be a great and marvelous work wrought by them before that judgment day. And if ye had all the scriptures which give an account of all the marvelous works of Christ, ye would, according to the words of Christ, know that these things must surely come. And woe be unto him that will not hearken unto the words of Jesus, and also to them whom he hath chosen and sent among them. For whoso receiveth not the words of Jesus, and the words of those whom he hath sent, receiveth not him. And therefore he will not receive them at the last day. And it would be better for them if they had not been born. For do ye suppose that ye can get rid of the justice of an offended God, who hath been trampled under feet of men, that thereby salvation might come? And now, behold, as I spake concerning those whom the Lord hath chosen, yea, even three who were caught up into the heavens, 
that I knew not whether they were cleansed from mortality to immortality. But behold, since I wrote, I have inquired of the Lord, and he hath made it manifest unto me that there must needs be a change wrought upon their bodies, or else it needs be that they must taste of death. Therefore, that they might not taste of death, there was a change wrought upon their bodies, that they might not suffer pain nor sorrow, save it were for the sins of the world. Now this change was not equal to that which shall take place at the last day, but there was a change wrought upon them, insomuch that Satan could have no power over them, that he could not tempt them, and they were sanctified in the flesh, that they were holy, and that the powers of the earth could not hold them. And in this state they were to remain until the judgment day of Christ, and at that day they were to receive a greater change, and to be received into the kingdom of the Father, to go no more out, but to dwell with God eternally in the heavens. And now behold, I say unto you, that when the Lord shall see fit in his wisdom, that these sayings shall come unto the Gentiles according to his word, then ye may know that the covenant which the Father hath made with the children of Israel concerning their restoration to the lands of their inheritance is already beginning to be fulfilled. And ye may know that the words of the Lord, which have been spoken by the holy prophets, shall all be fulfilled. And ye need not say that the Lord delays his coming under the children of Israel. And ye need not imagine in your hearts that the words which have been spoken are vain. For behold, the Lord will remember his covenant which he hath made unto his people of the house of Israel. And when ye shall see these sayings coming forth among you, then ye need not any longer spurn at the doings of the Lord. For the sword of his justice is in his right hand. And behold, at that day, if ye shall spurn at his doings, he will cause that it shall soon overtake you. Woe unto him that spurneth at the doings of the Lord. Yea, woe unto him that shall deny the Christ and his works. Yea, woe unto him that shall deny the revelations of the Lord. And that shall say, The Lord no longer worketh by revelation, or by prophecy, or by gifts, or by tongues, or by healings, or by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yea, and woe unto him that shall say at that day to get gain, that there can be no miracle wrought by Jesus Christ, for he that doeth this shall become like unto the son of perdition, for whom there was no mercy, according to the word of Christ. Yea, and ye need not any longer hiss, nor spurn, nor make game of the Jews, nor any of the remnant of the house of Israel. For behold, the Lord remembereth his covenant unto them, and he will do unto them according to that which he hath sworn. Therefore ye need not suppose that ye can turn the right hand of the Lord unto the left, that he may not execute judgment unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the house of Israel. Hearken, O ye Gentiles, and hear the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, which he hath commanded me, that I should speak concerning you. For, behold, he commandeth me, that I should write, saying, Turn, all ye Gentiles, from your wicked ways, and repent of your evil doings, of your lyings and deceivings, and of your whoredoms, and of your secret abominations, and your idolatries, and of your murders, and your priestcrafts, and your envyings, and your strifes, and from all your wickedness and abominations, and come unto me, and be baptized in my name, that ye may receive a remission of your sins, and may be filled with the Holy Ghost, that ye may be numbered with my people who are of the house of Israel.